Hey Threadheads, hope everyone's doing well. Let's get this camera positioned here. All right, let's see here. How's that looking for everybody? All right, so kind of the idea of this today is for me to just kind of go through some of the things that I do for creating my own fly patterns. I thought it might be kind of interesting if you guys had a bit of an idea as to the process. So, we just want to kind of step through it. Hey, Steve, how's it going out there? Hey, Lori, how's it going? So, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, I just got one of the uh, ugliest flies here that I've ever tied in my life. So hopefully we're going to come up with something a little bit better than that. All right. So let's see here. Um, hi, Brian. How's it going? Steve, you guys got a ton of snow down there? We had a uh, white Christmas up here, which isn't the greatest. I guess it's not the worst, but would be nice to have a little bit of white stuff on the ground for Christmas. John, hey, how's it going? Cool color mix. Thanks for that. This is my, I'm thinking you might actually be able to catch some fish on that, but uh, hey, who knows? All right, so let's get started with this. Um, so I guess the first thing we want to look at is what kind of hook do we want to use I'm pretty partial to these jig hooks but uh, I also like using some of these curved nymph hooks and this is the firehole 315 and uh, here's just sort of a classic nymph hook this is the firehole 633 so maybe you guys can just shout out uh, what your preference is the jig hook the scud hook or the uh, traditional nymph okay i'll wait a minute or two just to get that response and then we'll get into it i think here okay we got one vote for scud from brian uh, James, we're clearly going going with the attractor response. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we got one for the scud, one for the wet fly. Okay. Let's get a couple more um, responses there, and then we'll dive into this one. Okay, we got one for each. Um one scud, one wet, and one jig. I really like the uh, jig hooks as well. Um, Steve's he's chiming in with a scud or wet fly. So let's go either between the scud or the wet fly. Take uh, one more response and we'll go with that. <clears throat> so while we're waiting to decide on the hook style we're going to use, um, I'm going to use a tungsten bead on this. I'm not sure if you saw my review of the firehole stones, but we've got a large selection of colors there. Um, so do we want to go with 
something metallic, something uh, a little bit darker and muted, or do we want to go with something really hot like this red bead or an, an orange or a red or pink? Got uh, quite a few choices here. Those are some of the colors we can go with. All right, I'm going to make an executive decision. We're going to go with a scud hook here. And um, all right, so looks like we're going with uh, maybe metallics seem to be the way to go here. Uh, I've got copper, two votes for copper, one for gold. So here are the options for the beads. Oh yeah, pregnant scud would be pretty cool. Um, use a colored bead in the thorax of the scud. Could definitely do that. Dark metallic and hide it in the thorax. All right, why don't we go with uh, the gold? I'll throw that in there. Nice thing about these barbless hooks, makes it super easy to get those beads on. All right. There we go. So for thread, um, let's see. Let's go with uh, just an olive. We'll use that as our starting point. Just going to use a uh, 70 denier olive. And uh, let's start talking about material for the tail. I hear pheasant tail. I've also got some Coq de Lyon and some badger. I've got some pheasant here. This is the Coq de Lyon, and that is the, uh, I'm not sure, I think it's a light pardo, this one. We can also go with the badger, this uh, silver badger, I think, or is that a gold? No, it's a gold badger. That's not too bad. Uh, I'm going to go with a olive grizzly. Maybe we could go with maybe just a standard grizzly. Hola, Salvador. All right, so let's start off with a uh, pheasant tail here. All right. I'm going to take a few fibers. I'm going to take somewhere between, I guess, six and eight. Seems to be fairly good. Shorten that tail up just a little bit. Tie that in. So 
So I think uh, we'll try and go with James's uh, suggestion. And we'll try and build our thorax there. That should actually be a pretty nice um, waiting for this kind of scud hook. It's going to tip up really nicely, I think. So this is just the first pass of the fly, and we'll come back and we'll kind of examine what we like, what we don't like, and we'll change some things up. Uh, for wire, let's go with some gold here, if I got it handy. Hey Colin, how's it going? All right, so we're gonna take a little bit of gold wire. We'll tie that in for our ribbing on the fly. I want to keep it around there, hey? Let's uh, just go ahead. We'll just put a bit of a thread dam in front of that. Okay, so what do we got here on the chat? Um, All of Grey works too. Might even use clear mono for the rig. A rib. Okay. Dark red body. Talking like floss, or maybe we go with a dark red dubbing like a claret maybe yeah i don't want to use any zappa gap on this yet i think we'll be okay we'll just kind of keep that in place all right dubbing i think okay let's see what i got options for reddish or claret dubbing i've got this kind of uh dark red claret it's almost a coppery color there uh we've also got some seal i'm rather partial to the seal there's a nice red there's a bit of a, a darker one there Um, I've also got a bit of this homemade stuff. That might be a little bit bright. That's some of the uh, laser dub I made at home. All right, I think uh, let's go with the seal dubbing. And uh, we'll just take a little bit here. All right, 
I don't know what this is going to look like with red, but I think we got about three different flies going on here right at the moment. But we're just having some fun. So I'll just put a thin dubbing noodle of the seal on there. Actually got a darker claret somewhere. Uh, the thing with seal, it's a little bit tricky to dub with. You can see it's fairly coarse. So let's go with that. Oh yeah, I wasn't gonna put Scud back on there, was I? Well, we can. So, no biggie. Well, the thing is, we've, <laughs> um, let's keep this one as a nymph for now. Maybe. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So I think we got like three different fly patterns trying to go in here. Uh, we got a scud, we got a, a nymph, and I'm not sure what else. All right. So maybe we just kind of go with a nymph on the first one. And uh, maybe I'll, we'll do another one for a scud. Try that one next, maybe. Got to make sure I've got some scud back here. I do. Got lots. Actually, I just picked up some new colors of scud back. So let's try that one next. So let's just go ahead. And we'll finish this as a nymph, I think. So we'll add a little bit more dubbing to that. Just to fill out that body a bit. Yeah, seal dubbing, it's a few things. It's a little bit tough to get. If you're in Canada or the UK, it's not so bad. But in the US, it's... Uh, not legal to import, so you might have some trouble with that. So you might have to go with, I guess there's a couple different products like Simi Seal and as well as, I uh, can't remember what the other product's called, but something with a similar name to that. All right, so let's just uh, pull our rib over on this. All right, so let's talk about thorax and legs. I think maybe a dark thorax would be cool on this. And uh, maybe, maybe we can go with like a dark claret. Let's see if we got that here. So claret is, I think it's this 20. It looks almost black. It's actually like a really dark wine color. So benefits of seal, it's, uh, the main thing I like it for is just the bugginess. Um, and it's got a little bit of translucency when it gets wet. It's kind of similar to polar bear in that regard. So it's a little bit hard to see any of the translucency here. 
but that's not a bad looking fly actually. Yeah, okay. So I think kind of the last thing to think about for this is uh, hmm. want to put some legs on this, I guess. Should we do a soft hackle or should we tie the legs in um, on each side? All right, so let's, uh, I'm gonna use some partridge, I think. I'm gonna find a darker section here. And uh, I'm kind of excited to actually try this fly out now. I wasn't too sure about the uh, red color, but I think it looks pretty hot. All right, I think we'll tie these just in on the side here. I think we'll do it like this V style. Looks terrible. So let's just peel those off. Just go in like this, and then we'll come in and add a touch of dubbing extra if we need it. Let me have a look at the chat here. I saw Martin from Global Fly Fisher pop in. Hey, Martin. Good to have you on the stream. Yeah, so for Colin, for the stream here, I'm just going to be tying some bigger size flies just so it's a little bit easier to see. So I like soft hackles as well. All right, we'll just pull a little bit more dubbing in through here. And we'll add a whip finish. All right, that's not too bad of a collaboration, I think. That's kind of a neat looking fly. You know, I've never really used a lot of red flies, but um, well, not over, not here in Ontario anyways. But it's definitely an interesting looking one. I think uh, that will fish well. Sorry, I'm just having some trouble with this boom stand. It's a little... Well, yeah, I guess I do use uh, red midges and that sort of thing. Maybe just not nymphs, I guess. All right. So, um, let's see. James, we're going to 
humor you here and we're going to tie a scud pattern here. So we're gonna put in another scud hook. And uh, should we go with a hot orange maybe? Well, let's, here's our options maybe four. Let's go, we've got this uh, autumn color that's that uh, orangey color, then a hot orange, or maybe a copper. What do you think? So, James, I'll let you pick the color. Autumn or hot? Let's go with the autumn. That's uh, an interesting color here. All right, and what about uh, thread color for this? Want to go with something somewhat neutral? All right, let's go with uh, this tan colored UTC 70. And we'll start off on the back. All right, so for this, I think I'm gonna make the executive decision and I'm gonna tie in some partridge. And we'll go, let's go with a lighter gray. With a little bit of brown in it there. So we'll take a few of those fibers. Let's take them from that side. Tie those in at the back here. All right. Let's go over our choices for scud back. I've got clear. I've got some brown, black, light olive, or amber. We've got some clear going on. Clear, brown, or amber. All right, I think we'll go with the clear. Yeah, I think we could, if we had something good here, we could definitely go with a couple variations on this one. Okay. So let's tie in the scud back. We'll just tie that right on top. I'm gonna to take it back just to where the tail is. And let's add some ribbing. Do we wanna go with the gold again uh, or I've got a brown wire here, it's kind of nice. Yeah, I don't have any mono on the bench, so we can go with gold. Okay, let's do brown. <laughs> okay, it's a new spool.
brown over a light dubbing. All right. Everybody likes the brown. That makes that an easy choice. Um, James, I don't have anything securing the bead yet. Um, I think we'll, what we'll do is we'll dub the back end and then we'll just put the bead into place. And uh, we'll just kind of sit it there and then we'll restart on the front side of that and just dub the front. Okay. So tie in that wire. So I think um, probably a hair's ear is going to be a good dubbing to use here. Or I've got some of these laser dubs that I made. So there's a, let's see, sand. That one might be a little hard to see the colors on here. I'm not sure. Uh, I've got a barley sage. That one's got a little bit of olive in it. All right, let me see what I have for hairs here. Got uh, the gold color. That might be a little bit too dark. I've got uh, Eastern Brown March. I thought I had ordered a whole bunch, but I don't see it in here. That's the problem with having a uh, room full of fly tying materials is it's kind of easy to lose everything. Actually got some sow scud. This is the, I'm not sure, um, tan rainbow. How about that? I don't think I've used that before. All right, let's do it. Okay, so this has got a little bit of a pinkish and a little bit of green in there, I think. And uh, some translucent clear fibers as well. Looks like maybe even a little bit of uh, purple and blue. All right, that's not a bad looking color. I think I bought that to do uh, some... Rainbow Warriors, I believe. I'm not sure if I've ever tied them up yet, though. All right, we'll put some dubbing on there. Thin noodle. All right. And uh, keep it a little bulkier near the middle. We'll get a th bit thinner going down towards the tail. Then we'll beef this up here a little bit before we tie it off. All right, James, what do you think of that? Maybe just a touch beefier in there. All right, let's do a quick whip finish here. Tie on the front side. All right, and I think we should be good with our wire there. Oh, well, 
paper and uh, well before we do that i guess we want to talk about if we want to put uh a bit in the front there put some legs protruding out the front What do we think of that? All right. Yeah, I really like that color of bead, that fire hole. It's a uh, Really nice color. I just need to get these beads in some smaller sizes as well. All right, I just want to kind of leave a little bit of room there so we can tie that shell back, the scud back in there. We'll beef this up towards the bead. And how are we look in there? Yeah, we'll brush this out afterwards. Get a little bit of leg action going on that. All right, I think we're looking good. Try that again. Just in a bad spot here for tying that. Okay, so we got that in place. And then we'll take our wire. I'm just gonna go over top of that. Nope. Let's try it this way. And trim that piece off a little bit. It's easier to work with. We got three feet of scud back hanging down here. Uh, it's not really the angle of the hook, it's just the uh, camera's in my range of motion here. So I think that's okay. Yeah, 
I'll trim that off. There we go. Hey Martin, thanks for the suggestion for your, uh, putting the uh, wire through the bead. I like that. I think that might be good because I'm not a fan of that wire being right here. Let's brush that out with dubbing brush here. You know, that's not a bad looking scud. All right, well, you know what? For a prototype fly, so that's not too bad. So I can uh, definitely take suggestions for that one. And um, maybe we can put this into a tutorial later on. And uh, I do like that suggestion of passing the wire through the bead. Uh, make for a bit more durable fly. I think this will be a good still water pattern as well. So probably make these front legs feelers a little bit smaller or uh, make the back ones just a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. How about you guys? Yeah, Model A. <laughs> All right, yeah, I guess we could also marker that up if we wanted to. Um, I think I'm just going to leave this one here right now. But, um, yeah, that looks good. All right, um, how about we do one more? So we started with uh, three hooks, a jig, a scud, and a wet. So we've done two on scud hooks. Let's do a jig hook. We'll do something a little different here. So this is a partridge SUJ. Um, let's see, target species. Well, for me, it's pretty much trout and perch. Um, if I had my choice, I'd be going after grayling. But let's do something for trout in a small stream trout here. So let's go with uh, hmm. let's go with a black bead on this and uh, we want to use a let 
metallic black or a matte black. All right, let's go with the matte. Tell you guys, I'm gonna have a big mess to clean up after I get offline here. I got stuff everywhere. <laughs> it's quite a mess. All right, James, thanks. Matt is for the fish, metallic for the fisherman. Awesome. All right, let's try some. Should we go with. Um, olive thread, okay. Let's go with uh, maybe the brown olive here. It's a little darker. Or do we go with regular olive? All right. We're gonna go with the brown olive. It's a really nice color for uh, nymphs. All right, let's just put a base layer of thread on there. I heard black rabbit somewhere. Let's see if I have my giant pops dubbing. Here's my 48 colors. I think I have some black in there somewhere. All right, everybody likes the uh, brown olive, perfect. Okay, are we gonna put a tail on this fly? Oh, rabbit strip, hmm. This fly is a little bit small for a rabbit strip I think well we could definitely try it all right let's keep it to uh, hmm all right let's have a try here let me grab a couple zonkers and see what's up go to my other stash of zonkers. I have these uh, black and olive. Those might be interesting. All right, James, are you leading me to... Uh, tie a uh, meat whistle. All right, so if we do something like this, I guess we could do that, why not? Make it a little shorter. All right, what do you think? Um, The olive and black, is that a good combination or should we go with straight black zonker? Just let me grab a strip.
I've also got these, uh, I guess it was an animal print that I had bought and had zonkered, which turns out it's a pretty cool looking color. Maybe a little light. All right. All right, let's go with the olive and black. I'm gonna tie it in. Just pierce that onto the hook here. Without piercing me. Let's just tie that down and then we'll take care of the length. You know what guys, this has been an interesting process, I have to say. These flies have turned out quite a bit different than I had initially thought, which is a good thing. All right, I don't know about that. All right, let's tie that in. All right. I heard someone say something about uh, some braid. I got a box of braids. Let's see. I've got uh, rainbow, green, silver, black, red. Pearl, pink. So I do have copper. Let's see, where's the copper? So, uh, Martin, I think that was the original intent of this stream, and um, I think if we try this again, we'll kind of do that. We'll tie in this copper braid. Tie that forward. Okay, so let's see. That's how it's going to look in the water. Hmm, let's see. 
think we need a bit of a collar in here. Maybe a little bit of red underneath it. Yeah, I think, uh, James, you're kind of thinking the same thing I am here. So, rabbit in a dubbing loop. Sure, let's do that. Actually just picked up a new dubbing twister because I couldn't find my old one on my desk. Got it home, now I have two of them. All right, so I'm gonna create a little dubbing loop here. I think we're going to use um, I'm going to use this red Senyo laser dub. Okay, Martin was talking about uh, the rabbit as the collar. Okay, so let's try doing this here, and then maybe we can do another dubbing loop. For the collar as well, maybe. I do have some hackle that'll work well for that as well. I think we froze here. Hopefully that comes back online. Yeah, Christmas themed fly. Yeah, that's a little too much. All right, so our options are gonna be um, can do a black hen hackle on that, or we can go and try and do a rabbit hair collar. That might be nice. Just gonna brush that out a little bit more. option I've got some cross cuts in black but quality on that hair isn't that great looks actually pretty garbage I'm not gonna use that I'm gonna throw it out um, Let me grab a hen hackle. Got some black uh, whiting American hen hackle here. They make for some nice collars. This one's a uh, natural, so you got a little bit of um, 
a little bit of the uh, iridescence in the feather. I always like that. What else do we got here? Some flash. Yeah. Well, hmm. What if we combine uh, Martin's suggestion and we'll add a little bit of flash in there? So we could do another loop here. And I'll just do a bit of a composite loop. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a little bit of bronze olive ice dubbing, and we'll throw that in the loop first. Let's just sort it out first before we pop it in. And then we can take a little bit of that rabbit. And we can spin that in as a collar. Alright, I think that'll look actually pretty good. And we get a little bit of sparkle coming out from behind there. And dark collar should be good. Well, again, this is a first draft, Model A. This is one of those ones where we'd be going back to the drawing board, I think, and uh, making a few little minor adjustments before we get out on the water with it. But you know what? I think it'll be... Pretty cool pattern to play around with here. Let's go ahead and uh, add a whip finish. I think for this, if we were gonna tie it again, we'd look at doing it on a, just a standard streamer hook. I think we might have a little bit nicer look. That, that's not too bad, actually. I think that'll be a nice little streamer pattern. Well, what do you guys think? Yeah, I'm going to throw it regardless, and we're going to see what happens. All right, yeah, you guys want to see it wet? 
Let me see here. Um, I got my micro test tank here, so. We can set that up. Do a quick dunk test. I just gotta find a piece of uh, tippet. Just give me a second. Just going to tie a knot in here. We'll throw this in the water and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that actually has some nice action. Really like the way uh, jig heads, jig hooks don't hook up on the bottom. That's uh, huge, right? Yeah, it's not a bad fly. All right, I'm impressed. I had my doubts, but I think uh, we made something pretty cool here. I like that little bit of flash in there from the uh, diamond dub and the red and the copper works really well. Might change the color of the bead though now. And uh, maybe if we went with maybe this olive or the dark olive is nice too. Maybe the dark olive would be a good color. So I think that was tied on uh, number 10 jig hook, but Um, yeah, I think uh, if you tied that into a streamer or um, even left it on the jig and maybe went a, a couple sizes, a six or an eight, might be really good to uh, fly there. All right, guys. I think we're going to call that. And uh, I think that was a pretty successful little collaboration. And I'd like to thank everybody for coming out and hanging out and uh, chiming in on the discussion and all the decisions. I think it was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, I think Martin had touched on it before, what my initial intent on this was to just kind of start with one pattern and then um, make a few iterations of that fly. It's what I normally do, um, but it turned into something a little bit different, and I think that's okay. But I want to wish everybody a Happy New Year. Hope that you had a pleasant Christmas and were able to spend the, some holiday time with some family or some people close to you. And thank you very much for taking an hour of your time here, or a little bit more than an hour, I guess. 
and uh, checking out the stream. And I hope we can do a little bit more of this. I was planning on doing a video today, but my camera had some other plans. So we'll try and get that sorted out for another day later in the week. And hopefully we'll have some more videos up before the new year. Um, thanks everybody for watching. If I missed your comment, I do apologize. There's quite a few coming through the stream here, but it was, uh, it was a pleasure guys. Thanks everybody. We'll see you in the next one. Keep a hook in your vice.